Well, hi, everybody. Uh, as I have been introduced, my name is Damon Modulin. I am a senior here at Hober High School. And as has been said, today I'm going to be talking to you about memory. Now, for my sake and for your sake, uh, just to keep myself sane, uh, I'm going to define real quick what I mean when I'm talking about memory. Uh, there are real, really two types of memory that, uh, that I'm going to be talking about. The first is known as concrete memory. Now, concrete memory is that type of memory you think about when you think of the word memory. It's being able to recall information that you've learned in the past. It's a lot like a parrot. Uh, so, like, if I asked you, you know, what's the capital of Indiana? Everyone here living in Indiana, I would hope you'd be able to say Indianapolis without having to really think about it. That's concrete memory. It's, a, it's the ability to recall information that you've learned. Now, the other type of memory I'm going to talk about and the type I'm going to focus on is known as transactive memory. Now, transactive memory, it's group thinking. When we take our, take our game, for example, I don't believe I heard a single person say that they got every single thing right in that list. But I'm sure if we put you all together, you guys have everything. That's because you're using your transactive memory. So let's expand a little bit on transactive memory. How do you create a transactive memory system? Now, there are three, there are three criteria for making a, tra a transactive memory system. The first is that the knowledge shared between each part needs to be specialized. Now, when I say specialized, I just mean that it needs to be different. Obviously, take our game again, for example. Uh, none of you really studied every single object. There was no one who looked at just one object, the teddy bear, for example, and said, this is what I'm going to remember. But you all remember different parts of it. The second thing is that there needs to be a trust between every part of the transactive memory system. You have to, you can't doubt the cognitive abilities of everyone else who's in that transactive memory system or else the system falls apart. And the final one is that the system must be able to take all their information and put it together towards a specific task. Now, that can be really hard to do when you're talking about people. It's very hard to find people who are specialized in a lot of different areas in the same place. It's very hard to trust other people that their knowledge is always going to be correct. And it's very hard to organize people to work towards a specific task. I'm sure anyone who's ever worked in a group project understands this. It's not easy. But you do have a really good friend that solves all of these problems for you. That's right in your pocket, your phone. More specifically, your phone's ability to connect to the internet. Now, there's a reason that your phone and the internet are your best friends when it comes to making a transactive memory system. First of all, the internet basically knows everything, practically everything. Anything you could want to know, you can look it up. So you don't have to worry about having specialized knowledge because the internet has everything. It's all there, right there. Secondly, you can, you can fact check things on the internet. You can cross reference. I mean, we've seen, I mean, I mean, I did it before in here, actually, I'll admit to it, during one of the other talks, where someone said something, and I pulled out my phone, and I checked to make sure they were correct. We've all been there. You can check things. You can't do that just in a normal conversation. 10 years ago, that wouldn't have been possible, but now it is because of your phone. And finally, because you're the only other person in that transactive memory system, the only one making decisions, you're always going to be going specifically towards your task. So transactive memory, it seems like this really great thing. Obviously, it's got a lot of benefits to it, but we don't really see it in places like school, or in traditional settings where you think of learning. 
And there's reasons for that. There's political reasons, such as testing, where you're not going to have someone else to take a test with you. But more realistically, it's that before the advent of this, the phone and technology and widespread internet use, transactive memory simply wasn't reliable enough to beat out concrete memory. Concrete memory, all that you have is you. You know all the information, and that's it. When you try to make a transactive memory system with people, you have to take into the limitations of both concrete and transactive memory. You, if any part of that fails, then the transactive memory system falls apart and it's not effective anymore. Take for example, I'm going to give you a friend. Your friend is going to be named Sam. Now you and Sam, you're working together on a project. And Sam says that the sky is green. Now, you don't actually know if the sky is green or not. But you have seen the sky before. You can't say that it's not green right now, but you've seen the sky before. And you know that every other time you've seen it, it has not been green. So suddenly, the whole system falls apart. The next thing Sam says isn't going to seem as reliable to you. With your phone, you don't have that problem. If I pulled out my phone right now and said, what color is the sky, it would tell me that it's blue. That problem, you can check after that. You can search different websites to see. They're always going to tell you the sky is blue. So what's, what's even the point of it, though? Why even bother with it? Why bother with transactive memory if it doesn't seem effective? It is, though. It is very effective, and with today's technology, we can make it more effective. If transactive memory does become the predominant form of memory, which is a, it's very likely, you're already seeing it in the job world, and we're already seeing it in schools, what could happen? On an extreme scale, the collapse of society as we know it. We are built on a very concrete memory-based system. If we suddenly change that, there's no telling what could happen. And realistically, even if we do make a peaceful transition to a transactive memory system globally, relying on one source of information for too long is bound to end in disaster. More likely, however, is we will find a happy middle ground that will help us expand what we are today. We'll find that nice middle ground between what we know and what we can find. It's already happening. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't go to school here all my life. In 2011, 2012, when I was still in middle school in Gary, Indiana, they integrated this program called New Tech. Now, New Tech is a program designed to replicate the business world, the job world. That's what, that's what their goal is. So how do they do this? Well, part of what they do is they take away the teachers. You don't have teachers anymore. You have facilitators. Your, facilitator, your facilitators don't tell you information like a teacher does. Instead, what they do is they give you the resources to find the information you need using technology. Now, a lot of schools don't work like this. Hobart isn't a school like this, even though they incorporate parts of new tech, like the uh, Chromebooks we all have. I moved to Hobart my sophomore year, right at the beginning of sophomore year. That transition from going from a, a school system that provided predominantly for transactive memory back to one that forced me to think back to concrete memory, uh, I wasn't sure how it was going to go. I had been told before that anywhere else I went, I was going to be middle of the barrel at best. But, surprisingly, when I got to Hobart, the skills I had learned from New Tech and how to use my transactive memory and how to use technology to find what I wanted to find actually helped me to flourish. I became a better student than I ever was at uh, back in Gary. 
So transactive memory, it does have, there are results. I am the result of this. And my presentation skills might not show it, but, uh, but this is what transactive memory can do. It can help us to go beyond what we think we're capable of, what we know we're capable of. Again, finally, as my last remark, think back to the game. None of you got everything. It didn't sound like it. I did, the crowd was rather silent when he asked. But together, I'm almost positive that you guys got every single item. That's only by using transactive memory can you say that you were able to remember everything. That's all I've got for you, so thank you.